more common questions uh, that I get on the uh, North Coast for, uh, you know, for those of us uh, that spent majority of their uh, life in a uh, Fresno area or a uh, Central Coast, uh, it might be a, you know, a nicer view. But uh, as the uh, climate is changing, as uh, Rhonda mentioned, uh, we have uh, you know, uh, H-2A workers coming in, H-2A workers uh, skipping work, uh, disappearing into the uh, abyss. And now uh, we're having to uh, pay about uh, $42 an hour to pick fruit at night uh, in uh, Tokalon. Uh, this is uh, becoming more and more of a reality, uh, you know, uh, trying to uh, pick the fruit with a uh, mechanization. So I'm asked to uh, comment on a lot of the uh, uh, articles uh, that come out in uh, Wine Business uh, Monthly, and the uh, question I keep uh, getting asked is like, was like, well, you know, how are grapes uh, picked? I'm like, well, how do you think they're picked? You know, uh, so I don't know uh, how to answer it, but, uh, you know, maybe uh, I've been around uh, too long at the age of uh, 44. So why do people want to uh, mechanically uh, pick? Because harvest is uh, labor intensive. So 67% of our uh, labor costs is still uh, pruning. That's assuming that I know uh, all grapes are uh, mechanically picked. About 90% uh, of the uh, California acreage is now uh, mechanically picked, and uh, you know, it's the uh, reality. Because, um, you know, in a former life, I used to uh, calculate these. It takes about uh, six people to harvest uh, one ton in an hour, and these are, of course, not university people. They're actual uh, workers. Peace rate usually uh, equals uh, faster work, but uh, that's going away because, you know, we have to uh, pay a prevailing uh, wage and uh, over time uh, right now. And labor is uh, expensive, so in an ideal world, we would still uh, get to uh, pay about uh, you know, $9 an hour to uh, get about uh, you know, $124 a ton price. Peace rate is uh, you know, roughly around uh, $240 a ton, but uh, you know, labor is uh, you know, almost uh, impossible to uh, find. So sometimes uh, we're asked to uh, you know, uh, appear in court as uh, you know, uh, expert witnesses to say, like, you know, could these uh, vineyards be picked by a machine? You know, of course, anything can be uh, picked by a machine if it has a trellis. But you know, usually harvest needs to happen now. And uh, you know, especially in our warm areas, night harvest, uh, people are uh, requiring and demanding uh, cooler fruit. So economics of this, hand harvesting, going piece rate is uh, roughly about uh, 80 to $120 a ton. Five, six people on average picks about a ton of grapes in an hour. At seven ton an acre, and this is the uh, state average, 35 uh, person hours equals about uh, five, six to uh, $700 per acre. And about uh, four truckloads in uh, eight hours, you need to bring in a crew of about uh, 60 people. Uh, you know, we hire our farm labor contractors at the uh, Oakville station, and uh, these uh, wonderful people, uh, you know, commute from uh, Stockton. You know, I complain about, uh, you know, commuting from uh, Davis. But, you know, I'm lazy. Machine harvesting costs uh, range from uh, $275 to uh, $325 per acre. Okay? Three people usually is uh, what it takes, uh, assuming uh, you have a uh, 10 foot rows driving about uh, two miles an hour, two and a half to uh, three ag acres uh, per hour. So you're doing about, uh, you know, uh, if you're assuming uh, seven tons to the acre, you are getting uh, 21 tons per machine hour, one to, uh, to, uh, one to uh, 1 to 1.2 uh, person hours per acre. So it's 97% uh, savings. So cost per ton, is about uh, 40 to uh, 50 dollars per ton. That's roughly about 50% uh, savings. And you can uh, harvest uh, four truckloads in uh, four and a half hours. And what do I mean by a uh, truckload? How much does a truck of grapes weigh legally? 28 tons. Okay. So annual savings on uh, 300 uh, acres is about uh, $28,000 to uh, $35,000 uh, just on uh, labor for the harvest. Is it really 28 tons? I'm uh, spilling, uh, I'm spilling too many secrets. Yes, 20 tons uh, for the record. <laughs> so. 
as I mentioned, uh, you will uh, generally pick about uh, five times to the hour. Uh, this equates the uh, work of about uh, 100 workers. If time is of uh, essence, this is the uh, only option. And a uh, harvest can be done at night. Uh, it can be uh, sorted uh, on board. And then uh, it can be done uh, when temperatures are uh, low. And uh, this ensures the uh, highest uh, quality of fruit most of the time because, uh, you know, right now uh, we have our uh, onboard sorting based on, uh, you know, total uh, fluorescence of the uh, color based on our uh, size and uh, based on our uh, juicing. And uh, most of the uh, time uh, this will uh, avoid uh, uh, premature uh, fermentation in the uh, gondolas and the bins. So these are the uh, modern uh, grape harvester uh, brands as far as uh, we know. Uh, there's uh, AGH, uh, there's uh, AIM, uh, URM out of uh, Australia, Nairnado uh, New Zealand, Oxbow Corvan, they split back up again. This is a US company, uh, uh, partially owned by uh, the, uh, uh, a Dutch company. There's Gregoire, Palenque, and uh, Broad New Holland. And uh, these, are, uh, these companies have been around for a long time. Uh, we still have uh, Vine Stars that are uh, operating out of uh, uh, California, but now uh, you know, these are uh, uh, Vine Stars, uh, you know, uh, Australian uh, brand, so uh, they're kind of getting uh, long in the uh, tooth. So we have two main types of uh, modern uh, grape harvesters. So you can divide them up as uh, you know, uh, self-propelled or uh, tow behind. Self-propelled are uh, engine driven. Uh, usually they will have a hydrostatic uh, drive system. Tow behinds uh, require a tractor to pull and supply power via power takeoff. The newer ones have a hydrostatic uh, drive assist for uh, hill climbing for uh, you know, uh, hillside uh, harvesting. Self-propelled, as the name uh, suggests, uh, you know, you do not need a tractor to uh, haul this. Uh, it has, uh, you know, a low center of gravity with a diesel uh, engine uh, that's uh, mounted uh, low on the uh, chassis. And uh, we can uh, accommodate uh, a lot of uh, trellises now. Uh, I thought people were going to run me out of uh, Oakville when I put in a uh, high quads with a, uh, you know, 48-inch uh, cross arm. But the uh, white trellises, white trellis uh, machines, uh, these throats can uh, pick up to a 48-inch uh, cross arm. So trellis, uh, you know, uh, is not a limitation for, uh, you know, uh, mechanical uh, picking. Tow behinds, these are the cheapest uh, alternatives. However, a larger tractor is needed, roughly about uh, something greater than uh, 80 horsepower at the uh, power takeoff. Addition of uh, one or more uh, labor is, uh, you know, uh, required to drive the harvester. And more often than not, uh, you need uh, uh, a couple of people to follow behind the harvester uh, to pull out the uh, leaves uh, that might be uh, balling up. So looking at the major components of the uh, harvester, you have the uh, chassis, uh, the picking system, the catching system, the conveying system, and the cleaning system. Essentially, all harvesters uh, you know, do one thing, and they try to do uh, one thing uh, very uh, correctly, and that's to uh, pick convey and uh, clean. Uh, the chassis power unit, uh, you know, is an uh, integral uh, component to supply the uh, power to this uh, system to make sure that, uh, you know, hydraulic flow is not uh, impeded and, uh, you know, the uh, machine just does not, uh, you know, uh, fail in the uh, vineyard. So here's some, uh, you know, comparisons of the uh, chassis and uh, power unit uh, comparisons, self-propelled versus uh, tow behind. Self-propelled, uh, they're uh, more uh, maneuverable, uh, they have a uh, more stability in uh, more uh, most situations. They have a uh, uh, ease in uh, operation, uh, meaning that uh, you know you do not need a whole lot of uh, training uh, to uh, operate these. Sometimes uh, they have a uh, they cause uh, less vine damage, and of course uh, there's uh, less trellis damage uh, with these because you're not moving out uh, two pieces of uh, equipment through the uh, vineyard. Of course, the uh, main disadvantage uh, to me is the uh, higher uh, initial cost because with the, uh, you know, uh, accessories, uh, you know, sometimes uh, you're looking at uh, close to a half a million dollars uh, with these. Uh, the other disadvantage is the uh, fixed uh, horsepower uh, with, the, with these machines and our power uh, unit is usually not uh, easily uh, substituted. The tow behinds, uh, you can select a power unit uh, based on uh, uh, the situation uh, you have. They are safer to use on uh, extreme uh, slopes and uh, side hills. There's a lower initial cost, and power uh, units are easily uh, substituted, so you just uh, switch out the uh, tractor. 
The problem uh, that I see uh, with most of them is we operated a lot of them in uh, uh, San Joaquin Valley. They tend to uh, duck walk because the uh, tractors are pulling them uh, at an uh, angle, so they tend to uh, duck walk or uh, skip down the uh, rows. And they tend to cause uh, more vine and uh, trellis damage because another power unit is uh, you know, pulling this uh, along the row. And uh, they are more difficult to operate, and uh, it's not uncommon to see uh, people uh, you know, knock down uh, end posts and uh, uh, push down uh, T's uh, with these uh, machines. The chassis and the engine compartment of a modern uh, harvester, they will have a low center of gravity, ease of maintenance, better visibility, less noise uh, for the operator. Older uh, self-propelled uh, harvesters uh, had the engine uh, mounted uh, right on top of the machine, and it felt like uh, you, know, you were, uh, you know, driving a giant uh, dump truck with this, uh, you know, 100 horsepower uh, engine between your legs. In this general area, in the chassis uh, uh, HP uh, compartment, you have the engine, the hydraulic pumps, and the uh, filters. And these are, uh, you know, uh, the ease of uh, access to these is uh, key, especially uh, when these are uh, operating uh, at about, uh, you know, 12 hours a day uh, during harvest. The chassis, uh, the modern machines are uh, side leveling. Many harvesters uh, will have about uh, two feet of uh, total lift and about uh, 18 inches of uh, leveling capacity. They can operate up to 15 inches of uh, slope, uh, roughly about uh, eight and a half degree uh, of uh, angle of the uh, slope. Uh, you can, they can uh, correct uh, 18 inches about uh, every uh, 10 feet. Usually, uh, newer models have about uh, you know 30 inches of uh, lift, about uh, uh, two feet of uh, leveling capacity, and then uh, in a former life, uh, when I was working in uh, Fresno, uh, we did these uh, experiments in uh, Washington State, uh, where we were able to uh, harvest these uh, vineyards up to uh, 20 inches of slope in the uh, snow with these uh, new modern uh, machines. Next question uh, we usually get is uh, what kind of uh, picking heads uh, should we use? You essentially have uh, two types of uh, picking heads. You have uh, trunk shakers, usually for uh, tight clustered uh, cultivars, and of course uh, for the uh, new uh, split uh, trellises like uh, high quads. Uh, they will accommodate uh, white trellises. Of course, uh, raisin growers uh, use these uh, uh, picking heads. And then uh, also uh, table grape growers uh, will, use e you will use these uh, picking heads to pick the uh, tailings to uh, go burn into uh, alcohol at the uh, brandy factories. Here's a look at the uh, trunk or shaker system. Uh, you essentially have uh, these uh, two parallel uh, skis, and then uh, these uh, two uh, assisters, uh, uh, these, uh, two, uh, these two sets of uh, uh, rods to uh, you know, uh, guide the uh, uh, canopy uh, into here. Here's one uh, that we were uh, working on. You essentially have uh, two counterbalance uh, uh, weights that work in uh, opposite. And uh, when this uh, machine is uh, powered, these uh, skis are uh, essentially uh, running uh, against each other. They will uh, clamp down uh, onto the uh, trunks and then uh, shake the trunks to uh, pop the uh, berries off. But these machines are uh, you know, uh, quite heavy. Uh, we see them uh, mostly in the uh, flat areas. The other kind of that we see most is the uh, flexible bow rods or the uh, canopy shakers. These are the most common and they're uh, much, much uh, cheaper to uh, operate. The picking system of these uh, bow rods, uh, these bow rods are uh, extruded and formed. Usually uh, they're about an inch in uh, diameter. Uh, they can be made out of uh, steel, aluminum, uh, and uh, the adjustments uh, can go from the uh, stroke to a uh, rod spacing, to a uh, rod tension, to a uh, throat width, to uh, what kind of uh, RPM you're running these. And uh, depending on the uh, forward speed of the uh, machine, you can drive up to uh, three miles an hour. And sometimes uh, people will go uh, even faster uh, with the uh, newer machines uh, with these uh, bow rod shakers. Essentially, the uh, bow rods are you know, uh, tied to these uh, holders. And uh, there are, they have uh, somewhat of a give to uh, adjust them. Usually, uh, of course, uh, we will not have uh, all these uh, rods set up in these machines. So usually uh, you'll have uh, one, two, three, four uh, sets of uh, rods to uh, run up uh, against the uh, canopy uh, to shake the uh, fruit off. The uh, white trellis heads, indexing bow rods, these will uh, you know, accommodate up to uh, 48 inches in our uh, cross arms. So these will have uh, telescoping uh, sides. They will uh, you know, open and close to accommodate uh, 
uh, cross arms uh, ranging anywhere from uh, 24 inches to uh, 48 uh, inches. The catching system is probably the uh, unsung hero of the uh, harvester uh, uh, setups. Uh, these can be uh, made out of uh, Lexar or uh, nylons. They're essentially like uh, elephant's uh, ears, and they are designed like uh, flower petals. And then uh, they're continuously overlap from uh, front to the uh, rear and also uh, side to the side. As the machine uh, shakes off the uh, fruit and then uh, the uh, berries uh, drop onto these uh, catch plates, uh, they will uh, catch the berries and uh, uh, gently uh, push them to the uh, side uh, as the uh, forward motion uh, carries them uh, on. They are unidirectional. You cannot uh, back up with the uh, uh, harvester. I'm laughing because this happens more often than once. There's the uh, bucket conveying system. Once the fruit falls onto the uh, catch plates, they will uh, go onto a conveyor or a bucket system, modern machines. Uh, they will ha have a high impact plastic buckets that are uh, fruit grade. They're attached to uh, roller chains and hydraulically driven. Fruit is carried uh, almost in a static uh, fashion with no dragging, no rolling, and no unnecessary dumping. Modern machines will have uh, less than 2% uh, juicing once the fruit is uh, shaken off the uh, uh, plant, and uh, they will essentially uh, come out looking like uh, blueberries. Older machines are uh, used to have uh, cleated uh, belting, and uh, we'll look at that uh, diagram in a minute, which brings us to our uh, next point, uh, materials uh, other than uh, grapes. Material other than uh, grapes can be, uh, you know, canes, leaves, petioles, uh, you know, mattresses, whatever uh, that people decide to uh, throw into the uh, uh, truck bins. Allowable uh, levels by weight are uh, quite low. 2 to 5% uh, by weight. And uh, how to avoid? Of course, how to avoid is, uh, you know, proper uh, harvest settings and a uh, correct vineyard uh, setup. Proper uh, harvester settings, you're uh, in control if you're uh, operating these machines. Bow rod machines uh, will have to have the uh, correct rod tension, the pinch gap, and the uh, rod uh, overlap uh, from uh, top to bottom. Placement of rods, the height of these rods, because the uh, canopy uh, height or the uh, fruits on height uh, should be uh, ideally, uh, you know, set in these uh, vineyards. Uh, you can control the uh, uh, head speed, the uh, revolutions are uh, permanent, and of course your uh, travel speed down the row, and uh, of course a uh, driver has to stay uh, centered. With trunk shaker machines, again, uh, you know, the things are that the growers are in control of is the uh, head tuning, the uh, counter uh, balance weights must be in time, and the pinch pressure, the pinch spacing uh, of those uh, two parallel skis that I showed uh, earlier must be uh, correct, and the placement of the rails, the height of those uh, rails from our vineyard floor has to be correct, because, uh, you know, last time I checked, the uh, majority of our uh, vineyards have a uh, drip tubing that's suspended uh, about uh, 20 inches above the uh, vineyard floor, so you don't want to tear these uh, off. And again, driver has to be uh, centered. And now this is uh, where uh, you know uh, the uh, machines uh, start uh, separating from uh, each other. Uh, how the uh, machines uh, separate materials other than uh, grape. The initial uh, cleaning is done by uh, pre-cleaning uh, systems, and uh, these can be uh, passive or uh, active. As the fruit uh, is pushed to the back of the machine, it will be uh, conveyed uh, up the harvester. And then uh, here, you start uh, seeing the uh, rotary uh, mog uh, deflectors. The rotary mog uh, deflector uh, is this uh, piece right here. Uh, it will uh, remove uh, loose debris, such as leaves, canes, or uh, green shoots. It'll uh, prevent uh, balling up uh, in this uh, region because, uh, you know, as fruit is, uh, you know, moving through here, if it's not, uh, you know, cleaned up uh, from uh, leaves, canes, uh, et cetera, it'll ball up here. In uh, older style uh, machines like uh, vine stars, uh, et cetera, that have a uh, cleated uh, belting, you have uh, guys uh, walking behind the uh, machines. It's a great job uh, when you're young. You get to put on a Tyvek suit and uh, follow these uh, machines in the uh, dust and the dirt with a broken bow rod, uh, you know, pulling the, uh, you know, leaves and the debris out from the, uh, you know, cleated uh, belting. The uh, mod pre-cleaning systems uh, can be passive, as simple as, uh, you know, putting a slider tube uh, across the uh, uh, conveyor uh, buckets. 
Uh, this is a passive device, like I said. It's stationary and mounted at the uh, back of the harvester. This is uh, what will uh, guide uh, large canes and sticks off to the side and uh, out of the uh, bucket so it doesn't go to the uh, top of the uh, uh, machine. Once the fruit is uh, conveyed from uh, both sides, it goes onto this uh, cross conveyor uh, to be pushed off the uh, side to the, uh, uh, over the uh, row conveyor. Uh, this kicker belt is uh, you know, covered by these uh, suction fans. So in this uh, specific uh, machine, you have uh, one, two, three fans that will uh, suck the uh, leaves and uh, other uh, debris material uh, out of this uh, uh, fruit stream, assuming that the uh, you know, berries are uh, heavier uh, than the uh, leaves and uh, petioles and uh, et cetera, and uh, they'll be uh, kicked out. This uh, main conveyor uh, system, the upper kicker belt will catch the uh, fruit from the bucket lines. It'll uh, direct the fruit inward under the uh, primary uh, cleaning fans uh, here. The uh, lower uh, cross conveyor on top of the uh, machine, it'll uh, collect the uh, fruit from the uh, kicker belts and directs the uh, fruit towards the uh, over the uh, row conveyor. And this uh, cleaning fan uh, system, uh, these uh, three, one, two, three large uh, cleaning fans pull very large amounts of uh, air uh, at the uh, airdrop and then uh, leaves are the prim primary goal to uh, remove them uh, from the uh, fruit stream and uh, they'll uh, chop up uh, you know, uh, small uh, uh, canes and uh, green shoots in these uh, you know, little uh, propeller uh, type of uh, uh, active uh, systems uh, that will uh, kick them out. The over the row uh, conveyor system can put the uh, fruit into a gondola or a macro bin. Uh, it conveys uh, fruit from a final airdrop area over the adjacent row into a companion gondola, gondola or a bin trailer. The uh, swing and the height of this uh, uh, over the conveyor are uh, usually adjustable, and uh, this is usually adjusted by the uh, uh, operator. So majority of our uh, acreage was planted back in the day uh, when the rows were about a uh, half a mile long, uh, assuming that uh, you know you would get a uh, six tons uh, per row in a 0.75 uh, acre uh, row, and uh, the, that's why uh, these gondolas uh, hold about uh, six tons of uh, fruit. But our production methods have uh, improved uh, so much that uh, you know uh, usually uh, you know we fill about uh, you know one and a half to uh, two gondolas. Uh, per uh, half mile uh, row, uh, essentially a uh, 0.75 uh, acre rows. The magnet, uh, this is uh, usually an uh, op optional item. It should not be optional. Everyone should get this. There's a strong uh, magnet on the uh, over the conveyor uh, belt. Uh, this will uh, remove uh, pieces of wire, staples, VSP clips, wrenches, screwdrivers, coffee uh, mugs, whatever uh, people uh, leave in the uh, rows. It's uh, important because uh, in the uh, north coast, most of our uh, vineyards were not uh, planted to be uh, mechanically uh, picked. So we have a lot of uh, staples, clips uh, from these uh, wooden uh, posts uh, that are uh, you know, uh, ending up in the uh, uh, gondolas or the uh, macro bins. And uh, these are the things uh, that, can, uh, remove, uh, that can, uh, demolish expensive pumps and also uh, very expensive uh, bladders. And you know what happens uh, when you call a European company, uh, you know, in August. They're on vacation. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, questions that we get about uh, quality control issues. Uh, the number one question is the uh, percentage of uh, fruit remaining on the vine when you run a harvester through it. You know, up to 5% of the uh, fruit that can uh, remain on the vine uh, is uh, okay by a mechanical harvest. You do not want to uh, overpick. You do not want to uh, overshake. Uh, what happens when you uh, overshake? Uh, you more often than not, uh, you end up with these uh, raisined and uh, rotten uh, fruit on the uh, vines. We see this uh, more with uh, you know tight clustered uh, cultivars like a uh, Chardonnay, Riesling, uh, Sauvignon Blanc, and uh, sometimes uh, uh, with the uh, uh, hot area Cabernets, we see a lot of uh, raisin grapes uh, ending up in the uh, bins. And usually uh, these will uh, float up to the uh, top and then uh, they do uh, impart uh, off flavors. The other problem uh, we might have is the uh, percentage of uh, leaf area remaining on the vines uh, after a harvest. 50% of the uh, final leaf area is uh, okay for the vines to uh, recuperate after a harvest because 
really, we really do not have a you know dormant season in uh, California. You know, vine leaves uh, do not drop till you know December uh, in most places. So if you can't keep up to a seventy percent of the uh, leaf area uh, after a mechanical harvest, that would be uh, ideal. But uh, you know, more often than not, uh, you know, people uh, will quit uh, irrigating after a uh, harvest because sometimes uh, they'll run out of water, or uh, you know. You know, I go on vacation after harvest. People uh, take off, but you know, ideally, uh, you want to have uh, you know uh, this uh, larger leaf area for the vines to uh, recuperate. Damage to uh, trunks, cordons, arm spurs, etc. Uh, you know, you try to avoid these by uh, you know uh, setting the uh, harvester uh, uh, correctly. So the other question that uh, we get is about uh, fruit temperature, and uh, this is uh, you know a question uh, during harvest uh, primarily. So in uh, Oakville, Johanna, we'll talk about it a little bit uh, later on. Like uh, you know, berry temperatures, uh, you know, might uh, you know exceed 125, 130 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So uh, it's desirable to uh, you know pick this fruit uh, you know at night, and uh, the uh, temperatures of the loads do not change uh, rapidly because you're picking this like giant mass uh, roughly uh, when the uh, temperatures are uh, like a uh, 50 to uh, 60 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And the temperature of this uh, load uh, will not change for roughly about uh, eight hours. So imagine a situation uh, where uh, you know uh, early program uh, Chardonnay is uh, picked in uh, southern uh, Kern County and it's uh, trucked up to uh, you know uh, uh, Mendocino for a sparkling uh, program. You know that temperature of that uh, fruit uh, will not change uh, during this uh, you know uh, transport, which is roughly about uh, eight hours. The oxidation issues that we hear about is like a, you know usually a time in transit. It's usually not a concern uh, within the uh, first uh, eight hours if our harvester settings are correct. But the uh, oxidation issues uh, are mostly a problem during uh, wait times at the uh, winery when uh, you're going through the uh, crush pad. Cultivar differences. The same harvester settings do not work in uh, every vineyard. Although the same contractor might have uh, put in this uh, vineyard, but uh, you know, same harvester settings will not even uh, work within the same vineyard uh, in, uh, across uh, different blocks. Adjustments must be made to optimize the harvest. Furthermore, certain cultivars are uh, quite easy to harvest by machine because of the uh, cluster architecture, the way the uh, fruit is uh, hanging. And other cultivars are uh, challenging, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, some of them are, uh, you know, very difficult to uh, get off. Looking at uh, trellises and uh, training, vineyard design and uh, maintenance plays a big role in our uh, mechanical harvesting uh, success. Good stakes and uh, cross arms. Uh, if the vineyard uh, was not uh, set up uh, specifically uh, for this, you know, you will need to uh, retrofit it. Shorter cordons, less than uh, four feet from uh, side to side uh, from the uh, trunk is uh, you know ideal for uh, energy transfer. Tight cordons and uh, foliage uh, support wires. Trunks, heads, and cordons need to be uh, well supported, tight, and uh, kept in line uh, with the row. The way the uh, harvester works is about uh, energy transfer and uh, rapid uh, reversals uh, from the harvester. And uh, this uh, energy has to uh, travel through the uh, trellis and the grapevine combo to the uh, grape berries. When things are sloppy in the uh, vineyard, and you're going to uh, usually do a uh, you know very poor uh, harvesting job, keep in mind that uh, if these uh, trellises rows are not tight or taut, uh, you are not going to do a good job of uh, picking these. Because keep in mind, you are not ever able to uh, push a rope. You're, uh, you know, transferring energy through, you know, galvanized uh, steel wire through uh, different uh, stakes. If these are not tight, you are not able to uh, transfer this uh, energy. You end up with, uh, you know, trellis damage and, uh, you know, a lot of uh, dead vine parts uh, on the uh, grapevine. So with that, let's take a break.